Today we are having uh, two wonderful people, Maureen Pikarski and Konrad Novak. Welcome to Pole Vision. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Uh, they are both lawyers mm -hmm. and they were participating in a Democratic National Convention. So uh, tell us a little bit more about this, this event. What was your role there and what was your impression about the, the event? Um, Conrad and I are both involved in the Democratic National Committee's Ethnic Council. Um, I serve as co-chair of the Ethnic Council and chair of its Women's Committee, and uh, Conrad is chair of the Veterans Council. So in that capacity, we were asked to participate in the convention, and we had um, uh, two days of meetings and an ethnic festival. So for us, it was a lot of work, enjoyable work, but it was also um, a work event, um, putting putting these meetings together, bringing all of our constituents from across the country to Philadelphia. All right, and Maureen gave a, a wonderful presentation on, you know, uh, grassroots involvement in the communities and the various ethnic communities. Um, I had an opportunity to uh, uh, present on the contribution of immigrants to our national defense. Uh, I'm an Army veteran, and a statistic that I always share with people that surprises them is that um, over 20% of all recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor, our highest award for valor, were not even born in the United States. And if you take those that are the sons or daughters of immigrants, that number is uh, even higher. So that was my uh, contribution uh, and had an opportunity to address the individuals at the convention on that subject. And what was your impression? Um, about the Dave and Bing over there, because mm -hmm. we saw something on television, but I understand that it's completely different uh, to be inside during those few days. It was. I think, you know, from our perspective, we were working behind the scenes mm -hmm. in our capacity uh, on the Ethnic Council. So it wasn't just going there to party and have fun, but we were working behind the scenes. So you don't see everything that goes on to put the events together. But, um, but there was just a lot of... Um, a lot of excitement, enthusiasm. It was fantastic to see the Bernie Sanders supporters and the Clinton supporters come together, which I think they just did beautifully at the convention. Yeah, I mean, there's really no way to, to describe something like that. And obviously, you know, the things that stood out most for me that I think most viewers uh, remember, you know, obviously Madeline, Madeline Albright's mm -hmm. speech and her connection to her own immigrant story. I think that resonated with mm -hmm. us and, and other members of the ethnic community there. Um, uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Khan with his famous raising of the Constitution. Yes. And so it was, it f made us feel good as immigrants ourselves, although we're Polish, but we come together all as immigrants, um, to see those issues being really highlighted and the standout moments from the convention. So what was the most influential speech uh, for you or which one maybe impacted you the most? I, I think my, my two favorites were Madeleine Albright, who spoke um, strongly about uh, uh, Secretary Clinton's support of NATO and the importance of NATO. To contrast that with where the Republicans are coming from, I thought that was very powerful. And as a Polish American, that was most meaningful. The other moment for me was um, Governor O'Malley when he spoke. He's a strong supporter of our ethnic outreach program and um, and he would he just um, he understands the ethnic communities and has a lot of support for the ethnic community. So when he got up there and spoke about the importance of diversity, I know he really meant it and that was very powerful for me. And in fact he just visited Chicago several weeks ago as you know to, to visit with the ethnic communities here. Mm -hmm. um, for me it would have been those speeches as well and um, just as a matter of nostalgia um, uh, hearing the president, you know, one last time at the mm -hmm. convention deliver probably one of his most passionate, yes. um, entertaining, witty, and, and heartfelt speeches. It, it, uh, it meant a great deal, and of course, um, our candidate, mm -hmm. you know, Secretary Clinton, right. uh, to hear her, um, the first female right. candidate, it, it was moving. It was. It was really yeah. being part of history, which I think is what drew record numbers of people to the convention. I mean, there, there was standing room only. People were being turned away, unlike some of the past conventions. Um, there was just a buzz about being part of history. And that was what was most exciting for me, too, to be able to come home and tell my daughter that I was at the convention that nominated the first you know, Democratic uh, president, which is very exciting. And, and my you know, seven-year-old female daughter, female, female, female president, <laughs> right, right, um, was just, just got very excited, too. So for me, that was a very proud moment. So Polish people are talking a lot about politics. Do you think uh, they participate in, election, in elections as well? 
Mm -hmm. I think people do. I think there's always room for improvement, and I think mm -hmm. that's something that um, that I am passionate about. I, I believe that there's strength in numbers, and I think that's how our elected officials see it, is the strength in numbers, and so that we need to work hard. I feel like I need to work hard to get polls uh, voting and get them registered so that we can work as a community and, and, um, and, and uh, just join together. Um, uh, for me as well, you know, I grew up in the city and I remember what things were like before and I see what they are like now and um, uh, through my involvement uh, as I'm sure you know you know being the former chair of the Polish American Association which really works with the people I mean just everybody on the streets and helping that community um, seeing probably in the past five or six years a real swell of participation from the young so the new younger generation that we are seeing, these people that are coming out and active, many of whom I'm sure you know, um, it's really inspiring. It's something that we haven't seen as much. Now, the generation a little older than us and those individuals, we need more participation, I think. I think there. Um, it's there, but it could be, it could be better. I think over the past three years with the Ethnic Council, there's been um, just a, a resurgence of interest in ethnic politics. And, and like Conrad was saying, there are a lot of younger people who are involved who are willing to do the volunteer work, um, come to the festivals, do voter registration drives, and that's very important. Um, and it's, it's kind of exciting now to, to see the culmination of, of three years of hard work with the Ethnic Council, although the Ethnic Council's been in existence for a while. but. With, with the presidency and, and to, to get the Polish Americans mobilized in whatever ways that we can. We have traveled across the country, um, hitting pockets where there are lar large Polish American communities, and also just doing events in Illinois. We've had several events um, in Illinois, including we'll have a booth at the Taste of Polonia, which is coming up over Labor Day. Um, Governor O'Malley has come to visit, um, Senator Durbin, Dr. Jim Zogby, uh, founder of the Ethnic Council. Um, so for, uh, from, from your perspective, how Polish Americans are influential politically, mm -hmm. if, if they are? Well, they, mo they most certainly are. Mm -hmm. um, they're, in they're influential for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, their, their contributions, obviously, to not just the state, our, our nation's defense, mm -hmm. but as business owners and, and things, things like that. Um, I think what, what needs to happen a, a little more, and we're seeing that happen, is people coming together and various communities, very diff various different communities um, have come together and they've done so effectively and I think we are seeing now in the past few years mm -hmm. this move together which is exciting and it's as I mentioned uh, seeing uh, youth involvement and in individuals perhaps that before we've not seen. So for example earlier this year Maureen, myself and a friend of ours, Dark Barsikowski from the East Coast um, put together the first ever Polish leadership summit in Washington DC with events at the embassy on Capitol Hill and at the White House mm -hmm. and it was kind of surprising to think that that had never really right. been done before in that way and it brought together groups that maybe in the past you know didn't quite agree on different approaches to politics or, or policy um, that all came together and all in a right. room we sat there as Polish Americans together and said hey look at this right. This, it was an incredibly diverse crowd, which is something we were most proud of. We, we hit, you know, both coasts, um, age groups, different organizations. It was just an incredibly diverse crowd that came together on behalf of all of Polonia, whether you were even Democrat or Republican. It was coming together as a group and showing your strength, and, and that's what we really work to do. I think that's just important for the community is, is this, we've got the numbers, there's strength in numbers. All right, and what is the future of this summit? The future is to build upon it and make it mm -hmm. better and try to accomplish it, maybe if not every year, but every mm -hmm. two years, mm -hmm. because it's a pretty sad, I mean, when it was all over, I, you know, we, first of all, we couldn't believe right. that it all came together and that we were able to do it because it was a large undertaking. Right. But the future of it, I think, begins as it doesn't with anything else, bringing people together that have the same passion, whatever or wherever it may come from. and showing them that this involvement means something mm -hmm. and if you continue it it'll mean something even more so that was that's my hope for and, the future. and showing the elected officials that who participated in our events that look at this crowd look at this community mm -hmm. that hasn't come together before look you know look at how you can target us and, and work together to um, to pass whatever proposals are out there 
And the most interesting thing is um, one of our dear friends uh, who works at the White House, Asher mm -hmm. Marison, who's involved in uh, ethnic outreach, does a lot of these things. And he could not believe mm -hmm. that we filled one of the largest auditoriums that they Ooh. have in a meeting. Filled House. it, filled yeah. it with Polish leaders from all mm -hmm. over, a response that right. really hasn't been seen yeah. before. So things like that people notice. In fact, we're working on another event, um, a refugee summit. The president, the, the UN is meeting at the end of September, and they're, they're going to talk about the refugee crisis, and that the president is going to be working on that. And as part of his proposal, we'd like to bring the um, Polish community back to the White House um, for a refugee summit to talk about what can be done, not only the Syrian refugees, but just the refugee crisis in general. Being American of Polish heritage, it's probably easier to be involved in American politics. It's even this, this ethnic roots give you mm -hmm. some extra extra power and, and probably uh, the great core to, to the speech or through your life experience. Mm -hmm. But being an immigrant is a completely different story. How can immigrants be more involved in, in political life in America? They first have to understand that coming to the United States, obviously people look at it as a place of freedom, a place of opportunity, and quite frankly many look at it in a sense of safety and commercial interests. What they also need to do, and in many cases we see this in, in our own old culture, is that they can be involved in government and they need to understand that very early. For Poles and many others, they come from places where that's maybe not an option from some parts of the world, Poland not so much, but um, some of the older immigrants that came from communist times, certainly it was. And they need to understand that right when they get here, the first thing they need to do is, is get registered to vote when they're mm -hmm. able to do that and understand that they can play an active role in, in, in our uh, political system. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing, so it's education and, and engagement. I think that's why it was so disappointing when Governor Rauner just recently vetoed the um, Voter Registration Drive uh, Act mm -hmm. that, that was going to automatically um, register voters. And, and you know, that, that's our right. We need, we need to, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, everybody has the right to vote. And the government should not be stopping people from doing that in any way possible. And, and unfortunately, I see that going on across the country. It's, unfortunately, it's going on in our own state, which is just heartbreaking. You know, people have a right to vote. True. Um, are you planning any actions for for immigrants? Um, I mean, to to get them involved in, into politics. People whose first language is, for example, Polish or mm -hmm. or maybe Spanish, mm -hmm. uh, so they can be more involved because they can vote and they sometimes voting, but um, they are not that. Um, I don't know even how to say. They are not that conscious sometimes. They are not that. Um, feel savvy to, to, to do that. Yes. I think that begins with members of their own community, maybe perhaps that have come a little earlier or that were born here or whatever, taking the time and making the effort to bring those people in and make them believe mm -hmm. that they can do it and they will do it if they do it together. Um, it ties in a little bit to that cultural issue. Um, but it's engagement. It's going to people. It's talking mm -hmm. to people. It's, it's making them believe and understand that um, they can be part of something without, without being asked. And I think one of the other fears that hasn't been discussed is, is a lot of times people associate that with, with contributing money. Okay, mm -hmm. And that is an issue in some cases. But I will tell you this. When the Ethnic Council started, or most recent, its most recent vintage, our first major meeting with mm -hmm. the CEO of the DNC, Amy Dacey, and uh, Alexander Chalupa, the DNC ethnic liaison, um, it was about 15 people in a room here in Chicago. We did it the next year, it became 60 people. Mm -hmm. We did it the next year, it was about 100 or so people, and the most recent one was about 130 people. And these are leaders in the community. Mm -hmm. Not once at any one of those meetings did anybody say, would you like to contribute to mm -hmm. this cause? It wasn't. It was no. tell us what matters in your community right. and what we can do mm -hmm. together to make that change. It sounds kind of silly, but that's pretty basic politics, mm -hmm. is getting there and saying, what can we do first before saying, can right. you help me? Um, that's been a big right. difference I mean, that we've how seen. How can we work together? How can, in our, our, in our case, how can the Democratic Party connect with the voter and really reach mm -hmm. to the community, to, to the grassroots people? That's, that's what we're trying to do. In, in, in the meetings that we have, 
um, in um, you know how how can we how can we just connect everybody, connect the Democratic Party to the voters, and um, and I, we're we're just trying to to do that to raise awareness so that people get out to vote and just the importance of voting. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you can't complain if you don't vote, that's that's my theory. True. People True. love to do that. Right. Well, everybody right. loves to complain. Right. You know, but right. You have to Speak with your vote. But you actually have to vote. So, yes. uh, how are you? Uh, how are you reaching out to the community? Um, we've we've got we've had meetings. Mm -hmm. um, we are having a booth at the Taste of Polonia, which will be um, the Democratic booth, um, and I, all of the Democratic candidates in the state and nationally have been invited to attend. So we will see who will be mm -hmm. able to make it. Um, that's that's always interesting, but um, voter registration drives is to um, you know to get out to the um, to the communities whether it's the churches or the organizations um, to meet with the people and um, with the unions are working to to work with the union mm -hmm. um, people to get their the registrations as well. And then conversations really and and bringing people together and understanding obviously as Polish Americans we have a unique desire to help our own but collectively seeing that immigrants as a whole in this country mm -hmm. and you know thankfully and regrettably that has been the center piece of this election immigration mm -hmm. and immigrant issues and to bring people together to say listen there are a lot of the things that it's important to all of us whether you're Polish American or anything else and uh, um, reaching out in that sense and seeing and showing people mm -hmm. that they're together, they're not alone, you're not just alone in some community somewhere. You can come out and be right. together with others similarly situated. I and mean, I try to tell people that this election is more important than ever. And I, I know people say that every election cycle, but it really is, is important. I mean, uh, Secretary Clinton has said that she will have a Office of New Americans uh, to deal with immigration issues, mm -hmm. and that within the first 100 days, she will um, propose immigration reform. There, there is a stark difference, and, and that's what I try to tell people to bring them out, especially in this election cycle. Well, I think uh, that for many immigrants who actually have a right to, to work here, mm -hmm. and they have a right to vote here, the, the biggest everyday problem is that they feel like they are underestimated. They are mm -hmm. underestimated because they are working, they are taking the jobs that are under their qualifications. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have degree from their own country, but right. they have to do the different work. Right. Also, the, in my opinion, the big barrier for many people is language. They do not feel comfortable in, in English, and mm -hmm. that's why they they, they feel underestimated by others because sometimes people have no patience to wait mm -hmm. what, or to understand what someone wants to say. Right. And that's why a lot of these voters are turned out. This is my personal opinion that I'm just mm -hmm. sharing with you right now because for many Americans and for Mar many American politicians, they think that, oh, immigrants, so for all of them, the the, the immigration issues are very important. Mm -hmm. Of course they are, because we want somehow to help people who are here mm -hmm. illegally or under docu not documented. Mm -hmm. But on everyday basis, the, the biggest problem for many immigrants is being underestimated in general. Mm -hmm. So how the politicians, in your opinion, can address this, mm -hmm. uh, this, this issue in such a competitive country like America. Mm -hmm. I think one of the ways, is first of all, just bilingual materials mm -hmm. that they have. Um, a lot of politicians, a lot of elected officials do have an ethnic liaison director mm -hmm. within their office, which I think is another fantastic way because there are a lot of different issues besides immigration that affect the immigrant communities. Um, I know, you know the Democratic National Committee has an ethnic liaison director over there. Um, the Republican National Committee does not uh, do such ethnic mm -hmm. outreach. Mm -hmm. But I know that you know that we do the ethnic outreach and, and, and just trying to get out to the communities. And there are many organizations. I mean, language, of course. I mean, that mm -hmm. that, that that is a problem. And um, uh, again, uh, organizations such as PAA, which organize you know uh, uh, ESL classes, or uh, bring in various government officials. You know, from uh, uh, people from the state's attorney's office to the public defender's office. I know there's been a great deal, many form of individuals coming out to the communities, letting them know what, what their rights are in a variety of, uh, mm -hmm. of different, everything from uh, uh, zoning, like the assessor's mm -hmm. office has been, been out there, mm -hmm. to, to show people what government can do for them, right? And 
um, with that also is is getting people to understand that you know you have this magic power in this vote mm -hmm. and um, uh, you, you have to use it but you know I think we're seeing now y y the difference in it's not being underestimated as much as it was before because I think in this election mm -hmm. it's been pushed to the forefront and you have heard a loud cry from many groups ethnicities backgrounds that maybe weren't in the forefront before. Mm -hmm. um, so as Maureen said, this is an important time and uh, I think this election may change future elections. It may change how uh, the political system addresses and engages mm -hmm. uh, various ethnic communities. Mm -hmm. On the local level and also on the national level, there is another problem or issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I'm, Only I mean, one? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, there are a lot, yeah, but uh, yeah. the one, I think major problem is trust. Mm -hmm. People do not trust politicians. Mm -hmm. What could be done about that if, if anything mm -hmm. could be done? What do you think? I think things have, have regressed and I think what, what both sides need to do is start from the beginning and, and take baby steps and, and building blocks to, to, to get to where the trust levels you know, are high again. Um, and, and I think it's you know, working together when there's not an election involved when there is either side doesn't have a stake but but what can you do to work together for example with the assessor's office where they have their meetings in the communities I know they were uh, uh, Commissioner Carbonardi was just out in Jefferson Park a little while ago and and how can you work together in, in a common ground to, to benefit everybody not just in an election cycle or not just when the community wants something just really working together for the betterment of society and and taking those baby steps toward the toward greater trust yeah. and the other thing that I think that we've seen happen probably in the past uh, 10 years maybe a little bit more is we've seen a real polarization with the parties I mean they are further apart than they have ever been and when there is so much firmness in this disagreement it leaves very little time for what politicians used to do and that is engage the voter and find out mm -hmm. what they want the battles are here mm -hmm. um, you know a comment that I remember um, uh, Senator Durbin mentioned who's you know been involved for quite a long time is that years ago you could just walk across the hall and even if somebody was on the other side you could say hey you know how about this is there something maybe and you could come to some type of agreement mm -hmm. that has changed okay and so many of the things and many much of the engagement that individuals used to have with their political leaders is being distracted by maybe a national agenda as opposed mm -hmm. to a local one and we see that today everywhere mm -hmm. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for your expertise. Thank it was you. really a big pleasure to, to, uh, to have you here and, and see you very soon in Polish community. Yes. Thank you so very much. Thank you and very the much. the final message has to be register and vote. Yes. And go vote Polonia. Absolutely. Show our strength in numbers. Thank you. Także, proszę Państwa, rejestrujmy się do, do głosowania i, i głosujmy. Wybory już niebawem. Gościłam Konrada Nowaka i Maureen Pikarski z Komitetu Demokratycznego. Dziękuję za wizytę w Polwyżu. Dziękuję.